The base is designed to be a starter for a clan of about 6 to 8 people. However, it can even serve as a main base for a smaller team. We used it as a main base for a full wipe on Rustopia. As with all my builds, it comes with a starter unit and with small build steps. It features a spacious community area with all the items you need, two separate loot rooms with 10 large boxes of storage capacity, a drop chest room with four large boxes, an airlock with almost 360 degree view, and a sealable entrance that increases rate cost to a minimum of 12 rockets. The cost is 18k stone and 4.2k metal frags, resulting into an upkeep of 3k stone and 1.3k metal frags. The base you will see in this tour doesn't use any blueprints. Of course, if you find garage doors or traps, you can make the base a lot more secure. The first thing you notice is that the entrance is on the top level floor, not the first floor. The reason is you get an excellent view of what's going on around the base when you're coming out and then if you fight door campers you also have a height advantage. If you manage to find an auto turret, put it down into this corner. This way it covers the entrance so door campers can maybe shoot you but they will have a hard time to loot your body. You see that I'm only using double doors for, for the airlock. Usually I would use at least one single door so that uh, the doors block each other. But I think if you're a, a clan of, I don't know, seven or eight, you're just gonna be standing in each other's way and I think double doors are just way more efficient. Here, there's a room with drop chests, four drop chests, where you can drop up the loot you get from farming. And through this door, we're gonna go into the core of the base. Now when you're offline, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna run into a roof. And the way this works is the roof is attached to a wooden foundation. So when you come online, what you do is you start hitting out this foundation. And when the foundation breaks, the roof breaks as well. And if you replace this foundation, you have just unsealed the base. Through this door we enter the community area I managed to fit seven sleeping bags. We have five furnaces, a research bench, a level two workbench and if you want you can fit a level three workbench but you can use this space otherwise if you want. And then there is two loot rooms. One has six boxes and the other one has four large boxes, two small boxes and a tool cupboard. And with this base I think it's very easy to get off the ground as a clown. It's very easy to build. And when you go offline, you just replace the roof, upgrade it to sheet metal, and now it takes 33 satchels to break the core, or 12 rockets. The build starts off with a simple 2x1. Again, I'm only using double doors to reduce the number of bottlenecks. It's just too frustrating if people keep standing in each other's way. You probably won't have a tier 2 workbench at this stage. Simply place a tier 1 first and then replace it later. In order to build the first loot room, create this temporary trick construction. Now you can place four large boxes and two small boxes as shown. Once the starter is done, extend the base into a U-shape. Now you should be able to bring in the bags of all your team. The 
second loot room can hold six boxes if you place them as shown. The space in front of the second loot room can be used to place more furnaces and a research table. Some people say that every clan starter base should have a tier 3 workbench. If you temporarily remove this double door, it should fit nicely into this gap. For the time being, these double doors serve as an airlock. When they're both open, they block the entrance. Make sure to upgrade this foundation to wood only. Place an elevated triangle and upgrade it to sheet to avoid picking. Upgrade the walls to counter the use of splash damage. Now that the entrance is on the second floor, you'll need to build steps to be able to jump onto the roof. This completes the core of the base. From here on, there are several paths to further secure the base if you wish to extend its use. Here, I first upgrade the core to sheet metal so you can better see the result. However, you can as well save the metal for other things and build the honeycomb first. At this stage, if you seal the base, it will take the raiders at least 23 satchels, 4C4 or 12 rockets to break into the core, which is plenty of protection for the early game. Once raiders reach the roof seal, they might simply give up on the raid. Unsealing the base requires one sword or two hatches and is done quickly. Please note that you'll have to close the double door to be able to replace the foundation. Next we're going to be building the roof honeycomb as it allows to build a more secure airlock. To do that, place half height walls all around the roof. Then cover them up with floor tiles. Left of the entrance, we're going to build a drop chest room. For the rest of the walls, we use double door frames. Place shop fronts and double doors as shown. This completes the roof of the base. All that is left to do is to complete the ground level honeycombing. Place triangles all around the base. Then place walls all around the outer perimeter. If you desire a bit more security, place an extra wall outside of the loot rooms. floor tiles to finish the honeycombing. Finally, add a new set of foundations as stairs. Once you get garage doors, I recommend to replace all the double doors inside the core. This will turn a full raid into a 21 rocket raid. Stumble across an auto turret, place it into the entrance to protect against door campers.
The design is tried and tested. An earlier version of this base brought us safely through two wipes on Rustopia US. And I hope it'll do the same for you. Until then, Evil Wurst, out.